Hello folks, welcome back on another dreary day to the Muscovo. Now for those of you with a shorter memory, uh, the Muscovo is our 2007 uh, Volvo V50 estate, um, equipped with a Tesla Model 3 rear drive unit. Now it's been some time uh, since we've seen this vehicle featured and indeed since I've done any real work on, on it but uh, as you know recently uh, I've been accelerating the uh, Model 3 drive unit PCB replacement project thanks to some kind assistance um, so it's becoming a little more pressing do we have our test bed vehicle uh, ready for the prototype PCBs um, so that we can start doing some testing? So let's have a look. So when you have last seen the vehicle, um, I was putting the drive unit and custom subframe in here uh, using a mini digger that I had hired out over 18 months ago now for doing some landscaping work here. And sadly, up until recently, I hadn't really done a whole lot with the vehicle. Now, over on the driver's side, you will see that we have a drive shaft uh, fitted here. And it is joined up with a 3D printed, out of carbon fiber uh, PC, uh, coupler. Now, that's obviously not going to be the finished um, article. But I'm using it here just as a way to get my um, get my drive shaft dimensions uh, correct and check that everything turns freely and so on. Then we'll be getting that guy and indeed one for the passenger side made from steel and then sweating them on so that we have the Tesla end here and we'll have the Volvo end here. So thought I'd bring you along here as I emulate Greg for the passenger side, uh, which I'm measuring up at the minute. So what I have is I have the suspension arm lifted on a jack up to pretty much normal um, right height in there, which you probably won't be able to see. You kind of can. We've our, um, I guess what they call them, spider joint or whatever in there um halfway in the cup uh, meaning so that when we're at the normal height here that we have travel in and out in equal amounts on our uh on our drive shaft so i've got them um, got the tesla one and the uh volvo side there just cable tied up I'm going to put a mark there now in the middle of them and then we'll take them back out and cut them and then we'll be able to measure the diameter uh, we'll be able to measure the diameter and 3d print a um let's let's call it a placeholder coupler and then we can get this drive shaft in get a wheel on here and uh, get the vehicle back down so we've got the rest of the wheels back on um, and uh, so I'm going to go ahead now, mark that drive shaft and then we can take it out, cut it and get our printed part uh, made so that we can join them up. Then get this guy back down and uh, check that our kind of bounce it up and down on the suspension and that and make sure our drive shafts are doing what they're doing. And I can tow it around a bit as well to make sure everything's um, rotating freely. So this is a concern, folks, because I seem to be in possession of a Ford masquerading as a Volvo. And I don't like that, not one bit. So we're going to do something about it. Do something, Motley. Hmm. 
Well, one thing I will say, Ford sure do make these drive shafts pretty tough. Let's see what old Elon's got for us. Stay, Ford. Not bad, Elon. Not bad. Bad news is, folks, my microphone has got Tesla CV grease on it. I hope that's not a problem. So, while we're cleaning things up here, in advance of measuring, what do you folks think I should do about this whole fake Volvo thing? You know, I can't afford to buy Volvo back from Ford. I'm not like Elon that way. Or indeed, Victor Kayam. Uh, so what do you think I should do? Because I don't really have a Volvo. I thought I had a Volvo, but I don't. So that means... You know, not only do we need a new name for the former Moscow, but yeah, it just doesn't feel right. It feels, you know, feels like I've been shortchanged even. Thought I was buying a Volvo, it's even got a Volvo badge. But it's not a Volvo. I mean, the thing is, when you think about it, you know, I know we've got the problem with plastic BMWs and that. They're not real BMWs, obviously. But they're still made by BMW in a BMW factory. It's just that they've lost their way completely, right? And they're making plastic cars instead of cars out of metal. That's what BMW used to do, is make cars out of metal. So... The more I think about it, the more I realize how stupid I was at the beginning. <laughs> because that car, it doesn't have that kind of massive bumper on the front that, you know, you could hit something and, you know, wait a week before you'd actually see it come in through the windscreen at you. So it doesn't really have a Volvo front bumper. It has a Ford front bumper. And the back end of it, as Johnny Cash would say, looks kind of funny too. But uh, it doesn't have that massive vertical face, does it? That a, a Volvo would have. No, it's got like a kind of a fake hatchback thing going on. I don't like that. But you know what? I gotta live with my mistakes, folks. So, that should be good enough. Gotta live with my mistakes. I have to own them. Isn't that what they say these days? Yeah, I have to own my mis mistakes. So, someone get a pen and paper for me there because I'm gonna have to write these dimensions down. So, the old Mitatayu. Okay, Elon, buddy, what have you got for me? Ooh, I have for you, he said, 24.89 millimeters. I'm gonna call that 24.9, which means we'll print our part at 24.8. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, 24.9 on the old Elon. Uh, 24.9 on the Elon, please. And on the Ford, um, we are, ooh, let's see here. We are 26.08, 26.05. 
I'm going to bet, but that bit of rust pitting, this is actually 26. Yeah, let's call that 26. Which means then that we're going to make the forward side um, 25.9. And then we can join them up um, with a 3D printed part, put it back in the forward. hopefully get the forward back on its wheels and then we can do bouncies on the forward and check everything's where it should be hmm and with a little bit of magic from the old 3d printer here we have our um it's a polycarbonate carbon fiber uh coupler shrunk on there got our tesla inner and our forward outer uh, so obviously for the internet goes mental these are for just alignment purposes only make sure we get our uh, drive shaft length correct and then obviously we'll be taking both of these back out uh, getting these made from steel and sweating them on there and uh, welding them up before being installed with a boot um, on each end and so forth. So, okay, in the meantime, this is more than uh, strong enough for just um, alignment purposes and so forth. So let's go throw this guy in the car and see how it looks. And there we are, folks. There we are. You can see that too well, but it's in there. Um, it is turning, it's reasonably straight. So, next mission now will be to get the wheel on here. There it is, about halfway in there, and everything looks okay so far. Uh, so, I'm going to get a wheel on here now, and we can turn them easier when there's a wheel on here because obviously these are all rusty. And we'll uh, see. Yeah, we'll see how that looks when we get the weight back on the car. Okay, you folks keep an eye on that drive shaft for me. I'm going to drop the car down. Wish me luck. Okay, she's down. Oh dear, I think I have a slight suspension problem. My drive shafts are moving. Let's see if I can hop up and down on this thing. Oh yeah, let's get it moving. Squeak. Looks okay to me, folks. Nothing's kind of bent out of shape anyway. There, folks, the turd is back on all fours. Uh, looks like our drive shafts are doing okay. Now, obviously, until we move her around a bit, we won't know for sure. Uh, we're back. Obviously, we're riding a bit high because, uh, well, number one, the weight of the car hasn't been on those springs for quite some time, so it'll need to settle. Uh, number two, see I'd say our Model 3 drive unit here weighs a bit less than the combined gearbox and um, engine that was originally in here. <sighs> Alright folks, so that's our third. Um, pretty much back on our feet with the two drive shafts in there. Um, so... I've got to tidy up some of the scrap metal and stuff around here um, as I got a guy coming tomorrow it's going to take some of that away from me and uh, then we should be able to move the car around a bit just check those drive shafts aren't doing anything stupid and assuming 
they're good to go. Uh, I can order those parts in steel um, then from my engineering guy. And then uh, once we have the Red Arrow under its own steam again, we can haul this machine into the barn and uh, get those dryer shafts back out, get them welded up, get some CV boots on the Tesla side, and then that'll be that drive unit uh, ready for its PCB swap. So I've also got to work on that. Uh, it's great to um, it's great to have at least one other person uh, helping out on that project. It's given me a bit more, as I've said in past videos, a bit more, um, I guess, energy uh, to work on the project. So I got to do. Uh, I got to do some bits on the, I've still got some bits on the gate drive power supply, particularly the feedback uh, side on the control chip uh, to work out. But I'd like to think once I have that done, we can actually start laying out the board properly and uh, get some prototypes in. And then obviously this will be the car uh, that we'll be using for testing our um, Model 3, drive unit PCBs. So, I'll leave it there. Not a very exciting video, but then again, when do I ever make them? Um, as always, don't forget to check the links in the description for the Open Inverter Forum and GitHub and all those other more interesting channels than mine. Uh, do avoid the Patreon and the, pay, the PayPal, because if you support me, I'm just going to do more stupid projects like this. Um, just one last thing, just on the Model 3 drive unit, I do get often um, kind of, you know, uh, statements made and stuff that, oh, you know, I'm never going to do it or it's taking too long and all this kind of thing. Well, folks, uh, <laughs> the the, uh, the speed of the, pro the projects is usually uh, proportional to the resource uh, available. So it's taken me some time to get there, uh, but get there, I will. So... Yeah, until next time then. Happy turd renaming. <laughs>